Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34, and this will also serve as our sermon text for this morning. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, in the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're all familiar with the the phrase mic drop, right? Uh, The mic drop is something that after you make a profound statement, say something, do something that is worthy of notoriety, notice that you can just drop the mic, walk away, and everyone's left in awe. Uh, there, there are some uh, mic drop moments, uh, one from sports you, that maybe some remember is uh, Kirk Cousins when he had a particular, he, he's a quarterback, quarterback for uh, the Minnesota Vikings, and he had a, a particularly um, good game made some good passes, and at the end of the game, Kirk Cousins, our brother in Christ, very humble guy, intentionally takes Tuesdays as his day of Sabbath, right? Very even keeled, but he got fired up, and he's hopping along, hopping along, saying, you like that? You like that? And it was noteworthy to see him have sort of a mic drop moment. Today is a refer- Reformation Sunday and Reformation, we remember over 500 years ago when Martin Luther kind of, I don't know, how do we say, rediscovered or fought for the the gospel. And uh, Martin Luther had his mic drop moment. We saw this uh, earlier on the screen. Here I stand. I can do no other. So help me me, God. Amen. Mic drop. We've seen mic drop moments throughout history, and what we see today in our text from Matthew 22 is that Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior, has a mic drop moment. In the text, it starts with a question, a question that Seems fairly innocent, fairly benign. A teacher, one of the the lawyers, one of the Pharisees, asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? In Judaism and in Christ's day, there were a few commandments. Reading through the Old Testament, 
So Genesis through what? Malachi. Reading through the Old Testament, they, they found a few commandments of God. Anyone know how many commandments? Okay, so the Ten Commandments, they, they kind of make the top ten list, right? But there, there are other commands in addition to the Ten Commandments. Anyone know how many? 613. So well, what I have here is single-spaced, double-sided, eight pages of commandments, all 613 commandments from the Old Testament that were, uh, um, I don't know, written down for the people of Israel during that day. So when Jesus was asked which commandment, well, he had 613 to choose from. Uh, there are types of com- different types of commandments, right? So uh, we, we think of, of course, the Ten Commandments, the top ten list. But there are commandments about God and respecting God. There are commandments about certain signs and symbols. Uh, one that comes to the forefront is circumcision. That was a big one for the people of Israel. There are commandments around marriage and family. There are commandments about treatment of the Gentiles, those who are not Jews. There are commandments about the poor, commandments about forbidden sexual relations. Times and seasons had commandments and how to celebrate them. There were commandments about dietary laws, what you could eat and what you couldn't eat and when. There are commandments about business practices, property, clothing, sacrifices, all of these commandments, all 613. And Jesus was asked to distill this list down to one. Why? What, what's behind the, the, the question? Well, what is the main commandment, the one that we use to interpret every other commandment, the one that we can hang the rest of the commandments by, the primary commandment. And Jesus answers with love. Love the Lord your God. Specifically there, he's quoting the Great Shema, every Jew would be familiar with this, from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And he goes on, he adds to this, the other one is just like it. Love your neighbor, the one near to you. Specifically, he is quoting from our Old Testament reading from Leviticus chapter 19 today. In our world today, we can think of laws and rules and commandments pretty much anywhere we go. If we are driving, there are rules on the road, speed limits, and rules about staying in your lane and that sort of stuff. Traffic laws, commandments. There are dress codes at Certain restaurants or, or schools or, or maybe in school there's uh, a certain commandments, uh, laws, rules about code of conduct. There's rules around sports. And if you don't follow the commandments, you get a penalty. You get a flag. There are leadership principles. How to be a good leader. What to do. And all that really comes down to it's just another command. Life is full of commandments. But according to Jesus, whether it be the 613 commandments found in the Old Testament, or whether it be the commandments and laws and principles that we live by today, Jesus says they can all be summed up With love. Love the Lord your God 
and love other people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul goes on to say that if you do all those things without love, (laughs) you are like a, a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. You are worse than useless. Gulp. (laughs) Have we ever done something without love as the motivating factor in it? (sighs) Boy, if this is a big thing that the Lord wants, that Jesus wants, and we fail to love, we should examine our hearts. Now here, When Jesus says this, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself, we could expect this to be Jesus' mic drop moment, right? Drops the moment, or drops the mic, and everyone's left in awe. In fact, no one responds to what Jesus says in our text. But Jesus doesn't drop the mic. He goes on and seemingly... He takes a a hard right, goes in a different direction, takes the whole conversation in a a new way. He starts talking about, and he himself asks a question. What's the question? He asks, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Need to remember that Christ here is a uh, translation, Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one, right? They are looking for, in first century Israel, looking for the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Um, Christ is a title that we as Christians have given Jesus. Jesus, though, is asking the, the Pharisees, the lawyers, the religious leaders, What do you say about the Christ? Now, I'm going to argue that this isn't just a hard right that Jesus is making. He's actually continuing the conversation, but we need a little context to understand this. So, first of all, when is this? It's Holy Week. If you noticed... In the hymns just before the sermon, there are some Palm Sunday references, right? There's a palm branch, there's Jesus riding on a donkey, right? Where, where's Jesus at? Je- this is Holy, Holy Week. Palm Sunday was just a couple days ago. People were shouting hosannas to the Lord. Where is this happening? This is in the temple courts. This is in Jerusalem. What has Jesus been doing? He's been, he's been teaching. He's been teaching all, all sorts of things. He's been healing. He's also done a few other things, like cleanse the temple, drive the money changers out of the temple. People were shouting and praising his name, Hosanna to the Son of David. Glory to God in the heights. They're they're singing these things, and the religious leaders say, hey, Jesus, tell your disciples to stop it. And he said, I can't. If I tell them to stop, even the rocks will shout out. And Jesus' opponents, they have been been questioning Jesus all, all along. Now, where are we at? Maybe Monday or Tuesday of Holy Week, right before Jesus' death and resurrection, In those days, Jesus' opponents, the religious leaders, the elders, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the uh, Herodians, they'd all been questioning Jesus. They'd been asking him, like in our text today, what's the great commandment? Just before our text today, the Sadducees asked Jesus about the final resurrection. Last week in in the sermon that Pastor Schlecki gave, talked about the question of taxes. And who do we pay taxes to? To Caesar or not? 
But it's worth noting that these aren't innocent questions. Generally speaking, questions are a good thing, healthy thing, help us grow. But these weren't innocent questions. There is a, something behind them. Jesus' enemies were, were scheming. They were, as um, chapter 22, verse 35 tell us, tells us, they're testing him. They were plotting to entangle him in his words. They're seeking to arrest him. So you see what's happening here is that Jesus' enemies were surrounding him like a pack of wolves preparing to strike, waiting for the right opportunity. And there's a question behind all of these questions. Actually, the, the first question that they asked when he got into the temple on, on Palm Sunday, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus knows all of this. This is behind what, Je what leads Jesus to ask the question, Whose son is the Christ? The response of the religious leaders is the son of David. And yes, he is. Humanly speaking, Jesus is, is from the, the line of David, a descendant of King David. But Jesus then, quoting scripture, Psalm 110, verse 1, most common most often uh, quoted Old Testament verse in the New Testament, Psalm 110, verse 1. Jesus asks this question. He said to them, How is it then that David, the writer of the Psalms, right? Especially Psalm 110. How is it that David, in the Spirit, calls him Lord, right? This is David's son. I don't, generally speaking, call Asher and Isaac Lord, right? Uh, they're my, my children, my sons. Something is off here. But what is Psalm 110? What does David write? The Lord, God Almighty, said to my Lord, We would understand this as Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Jesus goes on, If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? That's the question that Jesus asks them. And there's no response. No one could answer Jesus. This is Jesus' mic drop moment. It's the last time that he'll talk to his opponents before his passion, before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane a few days later. It's the last time that they'll ask him any questions. And what Jesus is saying is that the Christ isn't just the son of David. The Christ is the son of God. By whose authority? God Almighty's authority. That's how I'm doing these things. I am the only begotten son of God. <laughs> if you, oh, you want to understand the commandments? Which one, which of the commandments is the greatest? It's not which commandment. If you want to understand the 613 commandments in the Old Testament, if you want to understand the stories of Scripture, the Old Testament, the New Testament, if you want to understand these things, then you have to understand Jesus. By whose authority? God's authority. If you want to understand the commandments, if you want to understand resurrection, if you want to understand paying taxes. You need to understand Jesus. It's all about 
Jesus. It's about Jesus' life. It's about his death on the cross to take away our sins, to pay our price for sin. It's about Jesus' resurrection, his conquering of death. It's about being baptized into the resurrection of Christ so that we, his followers, can have life. It's about Jesus' ascension. When God put his enemies under his feet, when God said, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. That's what Jesus tells us. It's all about Jesus. And that's the whole point of the Reformation. That's why Luther was willing to go to bat. It's not about indulgences. It's not about good works. It's not about how much you pray. It's not about how many times you go to church. It's not about whether you made it to church in a snowstorm or not, or when the roads were slick. It's about Jesus. In 1529, Luther wrote, Small Catechism. In this, he talks about the commandments, the creeds, the Lord's Prayer, these sorts of things. Let, let me read his explanation of the second article, the second portion of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me and delivered me, a lost and condemned creature from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be entirely his and live under him and serve him in his kingdom in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to eternity. This is most certainly true. Mic drop. <laughs> that is what it's all about. That is what the Bible is about. It's about, it's about Jesus. The opponents of Jesus, they couldn't respond to him, this is his mic drop moment. But the followers of Jesus certainly can. We can respond to him by trusting him and believing in him by faith. Receiving the gifts of God that come to us by faith. Luther goes on and his explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot in any way believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, nor come to him and reach him by my own reason or strength, but that the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps her in Jesus Christ through the one true faith. In this Christian church, he kindly forgives me and all believers for our sins each day. And on the last day, he will raise us all from death and give everlasting life to me and to all who believe in Christ. This is most certainly true. Mic drop. So what, what does this look like? What, what does it look like to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor as ourself? Well, I think we got a good glimpse of it last weekend. Last weekend we had uh, the, the confirmation retreat uh, up in Steamboat Springs. And so we uh, got together, four churches, Christ Breckenridge, Good Shepherd Leadville, Concordia Steamboat Springs, 
and gracious Savior in Edwards. We learned in the front, or at the front of the room there, you see Pastor Aaron Sheehan came from Michigan to teach. He's awesome. He's a really good teacher. We're learning about the Bible, beginning to end. We're learning that God is a God of, Isaac, do you remember? A God of <laughs> welcome, right? Yeah, a God of welcome. From beginning to end, God calls us, welcomes us into his family, into his home. Here we're eating together, fellowshipping together, hanging out. All of these things were good. The confirmation retreat was a good time. There was one little hiccup, though. And uh, Johnny is here to show us that, right? How's your arm doing, buddy? Yeah. First night, Johnny was with us on the confirmation retreat, climbing up to the loft, to his bed. It's just about bedtime. Fell off, broke his, broke his wrist, right? And uh, in that moment, I didn't see it. I heard it, uh, heard the fall, ran over to Johnny, and uh, trying to figure out, all right, what's happening? It, you know, is this just a fall, a little bruise, or, or is there something more? And quickly, Johnny made it pretty clear, right, that uh, there is more going on, that he couldn't move his hands without it hurting, right? At that time, Josh, the director of Christian education from Gracious Savior Edwards and Nicole Lance, got to, were, were right there, Johnny on the spot, caring for Johnny, put his arm in his sling, and we, t we, we were uh, lo looking to move him to the car, take him to the ER. And during that time, Caleb Lance, another 10-year-old boy who was there, was sitting off just a little bit in the distance. And I don't know if you remember, you, you were in a whole lot of pain at this point. But he was reading John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And he was reading Scripture in the background as people are caring for Johnny. And if you, you want my definition of like what does it look like to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor... There it is. There's our mic drop moment. Thanks be to God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.